Jared and Alex in the morning. And we're back. Jared Spagnola from the marketing department. Alex DePerrier in the sales department. Today we're here to talk to you about AeroSeal and solving your leaky duct problem. Alex, what are leaky ducts? Oh man, it's like when you go to the lake and you see a duck and no, I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's not that at all. So, it's in your house. So you probably have a forced air system in your house and you've got your duct work, mm -hmm. which is um, distributing the air in the house. So the hot and the cold air is getting distributed. And most of the time the ducts are in an unconditioned part of the house, either in your attic mm -hmm. and, or your crawl space. Sure. Yeah. So above or below. Right, yeah. right, right. And uh, leaky ducts can lead to a lot of problems. Some of them are going to be uh, problems with efficiency. So mm -hmm. basically throwing money out. Don't like that. No. And the other problem they can cause is health problems because if you've got leaky ducts and they're in a uh, part of your house that's unhealthy, well, you're going to get some of that unhealthy air in your house. I don't think we want that. No. Have do you, you, have, have you I assume you've been in many crawl spaces? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I went in one yesterday, one of the tightest ones I've been to, um, and it had uh, the ducts were stripped of the insulation. It smelled like rat piss. Sorry for the children watching. Yeah. But uh, there was a dead rat in the corner decomposing, feces everywhere, nuts everywhere. Absolutely disgusting, and unfortunately, it's pretty common. It's not a rare thing. This one was especially bad, but I would say most houses have some form of rats, and, and that's the crawl space. In the yeah. attic, then you've got that nasty insulation. Um, Blown in, I feel like every time, like even the few times I've gone up in the attics, I feel like I noticed that there is a distinct smell, right? Like, Oh, you shouldn't be up there without a mask. See, no, absolutely not. No, yeah. It's, uh, it's harmful for, for breathing in, right? You can have like chronic illness from rat, rat feces and urine, right? Yeah, you can. And, and definitely insulation should not be breathed at all. Okay. Uh, and, and so there's two ways that leaky ducts can introduce the air from your, uh, from your crawl space or your attic into your living room. So... One way is that, hmm, okay, so I guess now we should talk about the CFMs. What is a CFM? CFM is cubic feet per minute, and it's how we measure airflow. Okay. Right? So a CFM, a cubic foot, think of it as a basketball. Okay, perfect. So We've all had a basketball in our yeah. lives. So. Yeah, and then we'll calculate, you know, your, uh, a typical, let's say, 14, 1500 square foot house will have, let's say, uh, 1200 cubic feet per minute of airflow in their furnace. Okay. Right, so let's just make it a thousand so we can do a little math together, make it simple. So that's a thousand basketballs moving throughout your entire house per minute. Now, the average house leaks 10 to 30%. Whoa, that yeah. much? That much, wow. yeah. Well, we, you know, we, 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 we didn't know about efficiency. And so a traditional system is maybe unsealed, maybe we just connect the duct together mm -hmm. and not even tape them, or the kind of tape that used to be used uh, dried up and is doing you no good now. What kind of tests do you do to measure CFMs? Well, we could put a, um, there's a few different ways to do it. The one we use is uh, just a flow hood. You know, we can, we can do, uh, we can measure each, oh, I should have brought the, the flow hood here, but uh, we can measure each vent individually, or we can seal everything off and put a, I forgot, what, what do you call a machine? I forgot. Duck blaster. The duck blaster, yeah, right. Test it too, right? And, and then that'll tell you exactly how much leakage you have. Visually, it's pretty neat. When you blow the, the smoke into the system, you'll see it coming out of Everywhere. all the nooks yeah. and crannies you wouldn't expect to see the airflow coming from. Yeah, and, and so let's say you're leaking 20 percent so you're leaking 200 cfm 200 basketballs per minute into your attic okay the air coming back into the furnace has to be the same amount of air going out of the furnace okay. so at the return grill you need to have another thousand cfm if you're leaking 200 cfms in the attic that extra 200 needs to come back into the furnace somewhere 
from somewhere. And that, that's going to come from all the leaks in your house. It can come from leaky windows. It can come from canned lights in your ceiling, which is the main source of them. Even the leaks from there can end up back in your vents? Or the air has to ducts. come from somewhere. Your, your yeah. house is not producing any extra CFMs, so it has to come from somewhere. Okay. You're basically going to be sucking air either from your attic or your crawl space to make that up. That sounds very unhealthy. That is very unhealthy. Um, so that's, that's one way. The other way is very small pinholes, then you'll get something called um, uh, the Venturi effect, which will actually draw air from your crawl space or your attic into the ductwork. Um, that's a little trickier to explain, but that's so that's basically the two ways that you can get nasty air into your house. I think I was told that if you see um, a lot of, if your yellow insulation has black markings in it, that's a sign that air is being pulled in, correct? From your, into your, into your system? Yeah, that's right. So those, those you'll see, you'll see at every joint where you, there's connections, maybe a 90 degree turn or just two long pieces tied together. A lot of time you'll see that black insulation around it. And that, that could be either from a leak or air blowing out of it. It could be either or. Either or, okay. But that, that's a sure sign that you've got Maybe. some kind of leak there. Yeah. yeah. And um, then you said there was another side of it too, the money side, right? Well, yeah. So if you're leaking 20%, you're losing 20% of your, of your efficiency. You're basically throwing 20% of your heating bill out. It's taking yeah. 20 cents every dollar and throwing it in the <laughs> trash. Pretty much, pretty much. It's pain to breathe bad air in a sense too. Yeah, and it's interesting because we, you know, gas used to be so cheap and systems were designed that you just threw a bigger furnace out there. So you might have a 100,000 BTU furnace and you didn't have to worry about leaky ducts. You didn't have to worry about your just heating your attic or your crawl space. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. But now we're talking about electrifying houses, we're talking about heat pumps, and we're talking about systems that need much higher efficiency uh, uh, duct work mm -hmm. for them to heat your house. I mean, we, we need to extract every BTU that we can out of these systems to properly heat a house, especially a larger house. You know, I can, the biggest heat pump I can get is 60,000. Yeah. So, and if I'm going from a 100,000 BTU furnace to a 60,000 BTU um, heat pump, then I better make sure that our house is A, well insulated, and B, my ducts are leaking as little as possible. Yeah. Yeah, so, so your duct leakage is, uh, is, is a really big component of, of efficiency and health in the house. Yeah, so. And so can you tell me a little bit about the AeroSeal process? I know we keep talking about leaky ducts and the problem we're solving with AeroSeal. Mm -hmm. um, can you go over the process a little bit with me? Yeah, so <clears throat> AeroSeal is a great way to seal your ductwork. We use it when, even when we replace ductwork because it gets really, really good results uh, in really, really tight ducts. But maybe you've got older steel ducts that are in great shape. Mm -hmm. Steel ducts are awesome because the rats can't make it inside and they're very low friction. So What do you mean by that? I, I mean that modern ductwork have these little ridges in them that we use uh, flexible ductwork and the ridges actually reduce airflow. Okay. You know, so so having a solid duct steel duct is a good option. Now, we can't always reuse the steel ducts if if they're if the insulation is completely stripped off of them or if they're rusted too much, then it makes more sense to replace them. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of situation if you've got either aluminum or steel ducts, uh, it makes sense to use an AeroSeal system. Now, what the AeroSeal system is is we basically seal the ductwork from the inside and we can get um, leakage well we you know we, we advertise below five percent but most of our houses are well below two percent which yeah. is incredible there's no way to get that by hand yeah. there's no amount of of hand taping and, and mastic that's going to get a duct system down to two percent it's just not possible yeah so we can get your duct system you know ultra high efficiency with an aero seal system and like I said, it's sealing from the inside with a, an aerosol spray. Now, what do you think when I say aerosol? You knew my first question already. <laughs> is it healthy? Is it safe to breathe in? Is it toxic? It is not toxic. It's completely non-toxic. And it's, it's, it doesn't cure, so it doesn't off-gas. It's basically just a polymer that's suspended in water. And we, we heat that water and evaporate the water and, and get that that 
polymer to be airborne. Mm -hmm. And then it finds all the little holes in your ductwork. We're not coating the entirety of the ductwork. It just finds low pressure points and then it binds together and seals all the little holes. So this is uh, a regular uh, mesh, like a window screen mesh. Mm -hmm. And you can see it completely sealed this hole here around it. With it's even this. Got, got a little tackiness to it. Yeah, yeah, it still has a little tackiness to it because this one's kind of fresh. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool stuff. It, and it'll seal a hole up to the size of a quarter. Wow. Yeah, so it, it finds all the holes. And, and it's really, really, what I love about it is that it's a fully documented system. You know, you, 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 if you do it by hand, there's always a little bit of, of um, when, when the Hearst testers come, Eh, you, you, you know, they, they tend to give better results than, than what you actually got. When we do an AeroSeal system, we hook it up to a laptop and we document the entire thing. Yep. So when we start the system, it tells us how much we're leaking and you see a graph bar going down, 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 down. And it's really incredible to see, you know, the amount of, of sealing and the amount of energy savings that we get out of the system. Um, a little more about safety, yeah? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah, all right. So this stuff is safer than house paint, right? Yeah. So I printed out uh, the uh, safety data sheet that you can get from any uh, product that would be installed in your home. And basically, you know, serious eye damage, non-classified, respiratory or skin problems, not, not classified, blah, blah, blah. The only things that it says here is uh, uh, symptoms of injury after inhalation and it says may cause irritation. Mm -hmm. That's pretty mild. Uh, a lot of things in this world, yeah. airborne will cause that. <laughs> right, injuries after skin contact, product is not irritant to the skin, um, and may cause eye redness. Yeah. So really, this is safer than house paint. You know, house paint comes with more warnings about not drinking it and not getting it on your skin than this does. So super, super safe for you. Okay. And, and then when we, when we do it, we seal every register up really, really tightly. We seal the equipment up so there's no, none of it actually gets into the house. It stays in the ductwork. And then how about my system? Will the, the furnace itself stay safe? Yeah, yeah. We, we open up the ductwork and we, uh, we block all the openings to the furnace off. Because yeah, awesome. obviously we wouldn't want to get it in the furnace. Yeah, protect yeah. the coil. Perfect. Well, I think that that covers everything for our leaky duct segment. It's another successful day of educating about yeah. air quality. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I think we could spend a whole nother day on talking about, you know, the efficiency increases and what that means to your pocketbook and to your system performance. But maybe we save that for another day? Yeah, another one. Cool. Thank Thanks, you. Aaron.